nice of you to stop in again. Um, beautiful day for a for a bike ride, isn't it? Oh, you're here to learn about some curve sketching, aren't you? Well, let's go inside. I hope you haven't been waiting too long, and uh, we'll go inside and learn about some curve sketching techniques. So by now you should be comfortable with sketching graphs of polynomial functions. We can sketch graphs of polynomial functions by first looking at the function and seeing whether it is an even degree or an odd degree function. And that helps us determine the end behavior, that along with the sign of the leading coefficient. We can also look at critical points of polynomial functions by setting the derivative equal to zero and solving. And those critical points are possible locations of turning points. And of course, we could check to make sure they are, in fact, turning points or not. So today's lesson is on the second derivative. And I'm going to define that in just a minute. We're going to continue working with polynomial functions in this lesson. The idea is we're going to use polynomial functions to learn a set of steps we can follow to graph all sorts of curves, not just polynomial functions. So I've got an example here that we're going to work with. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to find the critical points. So I'll do that by taking the derivative and setting it to zero. Okay, so that's equal to zero at 3x squared minus 12x equaling zero. We solve that by factoring. And I can see that the critical points are going to be at x equals 0 and x equals 4. Now we can tell you that f of 0 is equal to 3 and f of 4 is equal to negative 29. And so we have critical points at 0, 3 and 4, negative 29. Okay, should be able to determine the end behavior of that function and then you might check to see if these are in fact turning points. Now we're going to skip that for now. We're just going to pull the graph up in Desmos. There it is. So you can see that yes, 0, 3 was in fact a turning point, and so was 4, negative 29. Now, when it comes to verifying these critical points are in fact turning points, you might have noticed by now that we can use kind of basic logic to realize that they both have to be turning points. For example, look at 0, 3. In order to graph 0, 3 and have the correct end behavior and graph 4, negative 29, it has to be a turning point. And there's a similar argument that works for 4, negative 29 as well. You might also realize that if a cubic graph has a turning point, it has to have two turning points. So those are all things that you can come up with that work just for polynomial functions. They don't work so well for other functions. And we're actually going to learn a new test today for determining what critical points might be turning points. Okay, so there's our graph, there's our critical points. Now I'm going to show you some of the tangent lines on this graph. So in particular, I'm going to start with a tangent line to the furthest left. So there's a tangent line right here. That actually has a slope of 36. So think about the next tangent on this graph. Remember that tangent line? That represents the instantaneous rate of change of the graph at that point. And we get the slope of that tangent line by from the derivative. Okay, If I move to the right of that tangent line, think about the slope of the next tangent line. Is it going to be greater than this or less than this? Well, there it is right there, the green one. And it's definitely less. In fact, the slope of the blue line is 36, and the slope of the green line is 15. As we move to the right of the green tangent line, we can see that the rate of change of this graph, although it's increasing, although the graph is increasing, it's increasing by less and less. The slopes of the tangent lines are actually decreasing. In fact, by the time we get to x equals 0, the slope of the tangent line is equal to 0. In fact, if I move to the right of that, not, I'm going to find that my slopes of my tangents actually continue to decrease. In fact, the next one is a negative value. So I think this can be a little bit complicated, but we use tangent lines to talk about instantaneous rate of change of a curve. And what I'm actually talking about is how the rate of change is changing itself. So it's actually, the I'm talking about the rate of change of the rate of change. So although the graph is increasing right here, it's increasing by less and less. In fact, it increases by less and less and less. And it gets to a point where it actually starts decreasing. 
let's go back to our uh, little note now. So we're now going to talk about the second derivative because what I'm talking about here is actually the second derivative, the rate of change of the rate of change or the slope of the tangent line or the rate of change of the slope of the tangent line to f of x. So I'm talking about how the derivative is changing. When I'm talking about tangent lines increasing, sorry, decreasing in this case, I'm talking about the rate of change of the rate of change or the derivative of the derivative. Now, in prime notation, of course, f prime of x is the first derivative, so it's not a surprise that the second derivative is f double prime of x. Here I've combined Leibniz notation with prime notation and said taking the derivative of f prime of x gives you f double prime of x. Now Leibniz notation on its own, that is what the second derivative looks like. And that is kind of confusing. How did d, I mean, taking the derivative of dy by dx gives you d squared y by dx squared. I don't really have a good explanation for as why that is the case. I've heard a few explanations before. I don't particularly agree with them. That's what it is. It's not great, but there it is. Okay, let's talk about concavity now. We're going to talk about concavity of a graph. Now, graphs can either be concave down or they can be concave up. I think of graphs being concave up as being like smiley faces and graphs as being concave down as being like a frowny face. So there's concave up, concave down. So down here, I've given you two graphs, two sections of a curve that are concave down, concave down and increasing, concave down and decreasing. And then here are two sections, concave up, concave up and increasing, concave up and decreasing. So notice half of a smiley face, half a smiley face, half a frowny face, half a frowny face. Now the second derivative actually tells us whether or not a graph is concave up or concave down. In fact, if the second derivative is negative, we can determine that a graph must be concave down at that point. Let's just take a look back at Desmos and see what I mean. Notice these first four tangent lines. This graph, this section of the graph here, is concave down. And our second derivative is less than zero. And the reason the second derivative is less than zero is the slopes of our tangents are decreasing. And when slopes of tangents are decreasing, that represents a concave down section of the curve. Even at the black line, even at the horizontal tangent line, sorry that, our graph, our slopes of tangents are still decreasing. They happen to be zero there and they change from zero to negative. So even at the turning point, the second derivative is still less than zero. Notice as well that all of these tangent lines are above the curve. If I look at a tangent line that is in a part of a concave up section like this one right here, you notice it's below the curve. So that's another property of concave down curves that the tangent lines are above the curve. Okay, so if I were to draw a tangent, I might write that down here. Tangents above curve, or the curve is below the tangent. So if I were to draw, sure enough, any tangent you draw, it's kind of hard to draw here, is going to be above the curve. Okay, well, the opposite is true when the second derivative is positive. If the second derivative is positive, then the graph is concave up. So let's go back to Desmos and let's see that here. We're just going to get rid of these ones. And here we go right here. So we have um, part of a concave up section here. And notice that these, if I look at these first three tangent lines, notice that these slopes are increasing now. This is a big negative value. Okay, in fact that slope is negative 9. The next slope is just a little bit more than negative 2. So from negative 9 to about negative 2, that's actually an increase, right? A smaller negative number until they, it gets to 0 and then the slopes of the tangents continue to increase. That one has a slope of positive 15. And clearly, the net, if I did graph another tangent line to the right of that, it'd be even steeper. So our second derivative tells us 
that our slopes of these tangents are increasing. They start negative, they get less negative, they get zero, and then they become positive, and they get steeper and steeper and steeper. And when that happens, it must be the case that we have a graph that's concave up. I mean, look at this graph right here. It's, there's no doubt that the slopes of the tangents in this section are increasing. And we might also notice that our tangent lines are now below the curve, not above the curve. So tangents below curve. Just going to write that down for you. So any tangent line I try to draw here is going to be below the curve. And you can see that, like if you look at this section right here, you can imagine the tangent lines getting steeper and steeper and steeper. The rate of change of the rate of change is increasing. Okay. We've already learned that when the first derivative is equal to zero, we have a possible turning point. Well, let's talk about the second derivative now. Take a look at this graph again. You can usually look at a section of a graph and determine whether it's concave up or concave down. There's no doubt that we see there's a concave down section and there's a concave up section. Well, somewhere that changes, somewhere the graph changes from concave down to concave up, and that's called an inflection point. And that inflection point is somewhere in here. Let's just take a look. If I start graphing the tangents, looking at the slopes of the tangents again, okay, here's our concave down section. Two reasons I can tell it's concave down. One reason is that the tangents are on top of the curve. And the other reason is that the slopes of the tangents is decreasing. The rate of change of the rate of change is negative. And over here, of course, I have a concave up section where the slopes of the tangents are increasing and the tangent lines are below the curve. So where does that point, how do I find out where that point is, where that inflection point is? Well, it should make sense that if the second derivative is negative in a concave down section and it's positive in a concave up section, somewhere the second derivative changes from negative to positive in this graph and for one instant, in order to change from negative to positive, it has to be equal to zero. So uh, if f of x has a point of inflection at x equals c, then f double prime of c must be equal to zero. So we can go back to that first example, and we can actually, which is the same as the graph we're looking at, and we can actually find the second derivative and see what we get. So f double prime of x the derivative of the derivative would be 6x take away 12. So there's f prime of x right here. I just took the derivative again. Well, when is that equal to 0? When does 6x minus 12 equal to 0? Well, that happens when 6x equals 12 or when x is equal to 2. So there's our point of inflection at x equals 2. Let's get rid of all these other ones here. Notice I've graphed the tangent at x equals 2 there. There it is, the black line. Notice it's neither above nor below the curve. It actually crosses through the curve at that point. So that's another property of inflection points. When you graph tangent lines at inflection points, they actually do intersect the curve at that point. Okay, this part of the lesson might be a little bit confusing. This is what's called, called the second derivative test. If f prime of c equals to zero, but the second derivative is not equal to zero, then we can actually conclude that there must be a local min or local max at x equals c. Basically, what we're doing here is there's another way to determine whether or not a point is a turning point, and that has to do with the second derivative. And I'll try to walk you through it here with that graph again. Let's go back to our first turning point, which is right here. Okay. The second derivative is not equal to zero at x equals zero. And we know that because we found the second derivative. 
It was um, f prime of x, double prime of x is 6x minus 12. If you plug in x equals 0 here, you get negative 12. The second derivative is negative 12 at x equals 0. In fact, the only place where the second derivative is 0 is at x equals 2. So, basically what this is saying is, look, the second derivative at x equals 0, x equals zero is not equal to 0. It's negative. So, so the, our, our tangent lines, their slope was decreasing, and at x equals 0, the slope was continuing to decrease because the second derivative was less than 0. And the same thing happened at our second turning point. The slopes of the tangents are increasing, and at x equals 4, they're continuing to increase. The second derivative at x equals 4 is not 0. So our slopes of our tangents are continuing to increase, which means they must go from, our derivative must go from 0. It must change directions, basically. So it's kind of like you're saying, look, this tangent line slope is increasing. I think I might have said decreasing before, sorry. Our tangent line slope is increasing. And at x equals 4, it's continuing to increase. So I know that it's going to have to switch directions. Because if it kept going down, that wouldn't work. So what we're saying here, and I know it can be a little bit complicated, is that if our second derivative isn't 0, we know that we must have a turning point. In particular, if our, second, our first derivative is 0, we have a critical point, and our second derivative is greater than 0, then we know the graph is concave up, even at that critical point. And so if it's concave up at that critical point, it has to be a local min. And if our second derivative is less than 0, then we know the graph is concave down at that point, and so it must be a turning point because the graph is concave down at that critical point. Consider the fact that you had a critical point that wasn't a turning point like this. Okay, It would also be the case that your second derivative was equal to zero as well. And so this wouldn't work. So like I know, I know this is a little bit hard to explain, but if I go back to this first example, what this means is that if I was working on this question and I was trying to determine turning points, and I said zero, three, and four, negative 29 were critical points, and I noticed that the second derivative was only zero at x equals two, then I would know that these two critical points, they must be turning points once I figure this out. Because by determining when f double prime of x is equal to zero, I've also determined when it's not. So this tells me that f double prime of zero is not zero, and that f double prime of four is also not zero, since f double prime of two is the only time the second derivative is zero. So this statement here actually tells me these have to be turning points. And if I check the sign of the second derivative, I'd find the first one is negative, it's concave down, and the second one's positive, it's concave up. Okay, sure enough, go ahead and plug x equals four into this equation right here. You get, what, 12. So it's concave up. And here you get, what did I say, negative 12. So it's concave down. So let's work on this idea of the second derivative test. So using a new polynomial, let's look at the critical points to start with. f prime of x is equal to 3x squared minus 6x, take away 9. Okay, so when is that equal to 0? Factor out the 3, and you get x squared minus 2x, take away 3. Continuing to factor, I get x, take away 3 and x plus 1. And so I have critical points. They're at x equals 3 and x equals negative 1. Now, let's take a look at the second derivative. I'm not going to bother with the y values on that one, by the way. The second derivative is equal to, so take the derivative of that equation, I get 6x take away 6. Okay, well let's take a look at f double prime of 3. That would be 6 times 3 minus 6, which is, let's see, 18 minus 6 is 12. Let's also take a look at f double prime of negative 1. 
6 times negative 1 take away 6 is negative 12. Now we've seen that 12 and negative 12 a lot. Don't worry too much about that, those numbers being the same. We can just think of that as kind of being a coincidence right now as far as all functions are concerned. Okay, so what does this tell me? Well, notice that at x equals 3, f double prime of 3 is greater than 0, and the graph is concave up, meaning that x equals 3 is a local minimum, and it is a turning point. f double prime of negative 1 was less than 0, and so the graph was concave down at that point, so it is in fact a local max. So that's how you can use the second derivative to determine turning points. Now you need to be careful with the second derivative test. Although a point of inflection at x equals c means that the second derivative has to be zero at a point of inflection. The opposite is not true. If we know that the second derivative is equal to zero, it does not necessarily mean there's a point of inflection at x equals c. In fact, it's very common to have both the first and second derivatives equal to zero, and there's lots of possibilities in that situation. You might have a turning point. You might have a point of inflection. Example of that is y equals x cubed. If you take the derivative of y equals x cubed, you get 3x squared and a critical point at x equals 0. So the first derivative is 0 at x equals 0. Well, the second derivative of 3x squared is 6x. Well, that is also 0 at x equals 0. So in this case, you have a point of inflection. Whereas this might be the graph of y equals x to the power of 4. And both the first and second derivatives of x to the power of 4 are equal to 0 at x equals 0. And in this time, it's a turning point. So we have this characteristic for both of these graphs, yet one is a turning point and one is an inflection point. Now, I know you're thinking, well, those are pretty like basic graphs. You know, They're probably just special cases. They're not, actually. Let's take a look at this graph right here. So we're going to determine turning points as well and points of inflection. So we start with the derivative. Okay, so we get 3x squared, take away 12x plus 12. Okay, so critical points, when that's equal to 0, divide everything by 3, and I get x squared minus 4x plus 4, which factors to perfect square, and we get one critical point at x equals 2. Let's take a look at the second derivative. So if I take the derivative of the first derivative, I'm going to get 6x take away 12. Now, if you plug in x equals 2 into this equation, you're going to find you also get 0 as well. Now, often what we do is we set the second derivative equal to 0 because we want to know where inflection points are anyways. In this case, I get 6x equals 12, and I also get x equals 2. So do you see how this has happened, that we have this characteristic, both the first and second derivative are 0 at x equals 2? Now, that might mean that x equals 2 is a turning point, it might also mean that it's a point of inflection. Now, I realize, and you probably realize, that it does have to be a point of inflection. A cubic cannot have just one turning point, so it must be a point of inflection. But in general, for graphs that aren't polynomials, this kind of thing can happen, and there's no real way to tell what's going on other than checking values somehow. So, for example, if we were to check here, f prime of 1, we would find we get 3, which is greater than 0. So the graph is increasing at x equals 1. Of course, at x equals 2, the graph is neither decreasing nor increasing. Um, and at f, x equals 3, pardon me, we find we get 3 as well, which is also greater than 0. So the graph is continuing to increase. So this is not a turning point. 
So it's not a turning point, TP for short. It must be a point of inflection. Now, let's just take a look at that graph. I've got that one in Desmos as well. And that is not it, pardon me. Um, but this would be, this would give you an idea of what this graph looks like. It has a point of inflection at x equals two. And of course, you know the end behavior um, and can see that the second derivative test does not work in this example. The graph I have here is actually the example that we did from yesterday where we found a graph that did not, that had a, a turning, a critical point that, that uh, didn't pass the test for being a turning point. And this is an inflection point. This is a special type of inflection point. It's an inflection point that's also what's called, has a horizontal tangent that's called a saddle point sometime. So notice that the derivative is zero at this point in this graph, but other, other um, points of inflection, that's not true. So in the point of inflection here, right here, there's no um, horizontal tangent line. So not all inflection points have horizontal tangent lines. Okay, well, I hope that uh, helps for today. I've got some questions for you to work on. Um, and uh, please let me know if you have any questions. This is not the easiest lesson. And feel free to send me an email. Thanks and bye for now.